All right, anyhow, so Jesse, you got to tell us a story. I know you've been begging me all last week. Hey, we got to go do this parade up in northern Minnesota, which, by the way, we know a lot of people up there. We door knocked, geez, I think almost every voter's house at least one time up in this area. This was uh, Julie Sandstead's. It was Julie Sandstead's district that you were in. Yep, and it still is. She's running against Spencer Rigo this time around, but uh, this is the parade to be at in the Iron Range. It's uh, probably the biggest one in northern Minnesota. There's hundreds to thousands of people there every year. Everybody's there to get rowdy, put on their American clothes, and have a good time. Yeah, and you got some special clothes on for this oh, one. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> this is this is what I was all decked out in, ready to go for the 4th of July. It's my favorite holiday. All right, so you're begging me, like, okay, I got to do this parade. Where's the banner? I'm like, I don't know how much we're going to put into this thing. And you're just really insistent on doing it. So I'm like, all right, here's the banner. You had a car. I mean, this is the most this is the most pathetic looking <laughs> parade entry ever. I mean, right? <laughs> it was, you understand? yeah. There was way better floats than mine. Okay, so we anyhow, just had the energy. You did. What was the uh, fee, by the way, for that parade? What was the what? It was our fee to enter that parade. Oh no, nope. We uh, just showed up, and uh, then next thing you know, we're I'm there with my cousin Larry. My cousin, uh, he was coming up visiting, and. Uh, he said he was interested in helping me with this. I was hyping it up, and uh, sure enough, we're there. We're setting everything up, chatting with all kinds of people, talking with politicians, and then uh, at one point, I even forgot I was wearing this shirt, and I was talking to a guy in a Walls shirt, and uh, he said, Tim Walls is coming. I said, no, he's not. Tim Walls isn't showing I don't up think here. Anyone, actually, I don't think anyone even knew he was going to do this. Right. Because um, I think it was a last-minute thing. This is Aurora? Is that correct? It was in Nashwalk. Nashua. He did Aurora, too. I, I don't know. what is there a distance? Because there was this photo of Tim Walls, and he's in front of this bank. And um, it says some national bank or something like that of, um, what is it, Ashland, Wisconsin. And so someone thought he was doing this uh, parade in Wisconsin, which <laughs> I was like, oh, that'd be great if he's actually doing a parade in Wisconsin, leaves Minnesota. Turns out it was like a branch one, the one branch I have in Minnesota, it's an Aurora. So he must have done two parades that day. But right, or just an old picture. No, I think it was littered from this 4th of July. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good Anyhow. for him. So, you, uh, so you're in Nashua doing this parade. Um, tell me how the story. How did this thing go down? Yep. So uh, my cousin Larry and I were just uh, setting up everything, and uh, then we hear Tim Walls is just down the road. So we start booking it, and uh, – you know, my cousin, he says, I don't know what I'm looking for. I said, just look for an average looking guy. This guy, <laughs> this guy's nothing special. And uh, so Larry and I are searching around and uh, sure enough, there he is. I ran over to him. I had to maneuver my way around all of his staffers and volunteers. They had a million questions for me, a bunch of silly questions. If hold I on, was, hold on. Like uh, paint this picture in my mind. Sure. Here. Like he's got to have 20 people or so. Oh, even more, him. probably about 50. 50, 50. What the hell's wrong with these people? <laughs> Where they come from the Twin Cities? Because he doesn't have 50 supporters up there. Yeah, By the no way, way, for those that aren't following this, he's in deep, deep trouble up in the Iron Range, which is where this is at. So that's why he's putting the effort into Nashville, which is interesting because the votes that he's going to get up there pales in comparison to like Chan Hassan, which I think had a parade that day, and Coon Rapids. Boy, right? But anyhow. Oh, definitely. They, they were all eyeballing me, wondering what I was about and uh, what I was there to do. And uh, I just kept – being cordial with everybody just said you know oh, i'm just enjoying the parade enjoying the fourth of july and then uh we get closer and closer to tim walls and uh told my cousin hey have your phone ready because i'm ready to go <laughs> and uh i walk right over to him i say hey i'm surprised to see you here and he said oh i'm here every year and i said no i'm here every year <laughs> and because i've never seen tim walls at the parade 2021 he wasn't there. I remember talking to some of his staffers, but I didn't see him there. 2020, he canceled the parade and caused all of the lockdowns in Minnesota. So I know for sure that he wasn't there in 2020. But uh, anyway, we just keep talking. He eventually oh, well, says, How long are you talking to this guy? Oh, not very long, a couple minutes. Okay. And uh, Tim Walls asked me if I, me and my cousin, he said, Do you guys even know who I am? I'm the highest ranking. No, 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 no. Hold on. Stop. Yes. You're wearing the shirt. The guy can at least read. He was a <laughs> he, teacher. He can read and he noticed it. And so he goes, do you know? So he thinks at this point you're just having a casual conversation. Right. With he this. thinks that I'm just a dummy who wanted to talk to this guy because he, he looks so interesting. Right. And and then <laughs> so 
You just was some poor sap that showed up to the Action for Liberty <laughs> State Fair booth last year and picked up that shirt. Or maybe you wanted <laughs> to spin the wheel at the State Fair <laughs> Yo, booth. Yo, he had no idea. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> yep. So he then, thinks you don't know who he is. So he goes, do you know who I am? Yep. You know, it's said, actually interesting that you say that because this is very similar to when uh, Representative Eric Morrison confronted him on the House floor in the infamous Lemon Bar. Uh, we'll call it Lemon Bar Gate. Mm -hmm. All right. So you, do you know who I am? Go on. Right. So he says, do you guys know who I am? I'm the highest ranking official in. And I cut him off. I said, I know who you are. I'm just here for a picture. And I just start put the thumbs up, ready to go, start posing because uh, I can see he's a little flustered. He's not really sure what, how to handle it, what to do. And uh, it actually reminded me of Mortensen myself because, uh, you know, Mortensen was telling Walls, you're never here. You're never around. I don't see you. And uh, that was the same kind of feeling. I never see you around in Nashwalk. So what is he going to say? I'm the highest ranking official in the state of Minnesota. Like, right. He, he didn't finish his sentence. Like, why not just, I'm the governor of Minnesota. Are mm -hmm. you too dumb to understand what that means? Like, I don't <laughs> understand it. Right. That's weird. Yeah, it, it was weird. And, uh, you know, once I got the picture, I was happy <laughs> because uh, I knew I wasn't going to sit there and convince him on anything, especially if he's got all of his volunteers and supporters right there. They're all going to gang up on me. So I got out of there quick and uh, kept my head held high. Bridget, you were weren't you in the gallery during the uh, infamous Lemon Bar Gate? Um, I was not actually. I I was at the Capitol, but not in the gallery, so I didn't actually see it happen. I I actually saw that live feed because uh, you know that you can watch the Minnesota House on YouTube, or they actually have uh, something on their website. So I was watching that live feed. And I'm like, who's this like weird dude that's going over to Mortensen? Because <laughs> Mort was actually protesting the mask mandate. He was the only Republican that actually had the balls to go to the the house floor at that point not wearing a mask and uh so i assume it was like someone with a sergeant's at arm and he was gonna like throw him off the floor and turns out it's, you know governor walls offering lemon bars in bipartisan fashion no bipartisan fashion by the way on giving back or surplus he wants to hold on to that for more government spending all right so he's the highest ranking official in the state of minnesota he wants you to know that how yep. does the story go you know, and then uh, I just started walking away. Some of his staffers were starting to follow me, see what Action for Liberty was, and seeing that I had a float and that I was handing out some literature that said that Tim Walls was a tyrant. And uh, <laughs> so they they just basically stayed away from me after that point. I realized, I think they realized that they didn't want to mess around with me. So why, like, when you got the photo, was it like he only had a second to react? Like, how else would he have been okay with that photo? Because his face is really goofy in that photo. It right. almost looks like he's somewhat enjoying the experience. Yeah, you know, he was kind of uh, just trying to play it off and make it seem as if I didn't really know what was going on. He was controlling the situation. Uh, but, yeah, and then Tim Walls, when the picture was being taken, he said, welcome to Minnesota, and my cousin said it right back to him. <laughs> welcome to Minnesota. Oh, Tim so he's Walls. saying that to Larry. Not, not oh, yeah. You. Okay, I was going to say, welcome to Minnesota. Uh, I live here, buddy. Uh-huh. <laughs> you yep. should say, welcome to Minnesota, Mr. Nebraska. <laughs> right, yeah. And, uh, no, it, it was just interesting for him to say he comes here to Nashwalk every single year uh, because in 2020 when the COVID lockdowns were in place, uh, my family and our friends and people in the community, we got together, made our own parade on the 4th of July, we weren't going to let mandates or any uh, lockdown stop us. The police and firefighters in Nashwalk joined us, and uh, we set that town on fire. We got people excited for freedom again. And uh, so for Tim Walls to claim he comes to Nashwalk every year when he destroyed the 4th of July in 2020, that takes some that takes some guts. Yeah, I should give some people background on Jesse and, and myself. Um, so Jesse's family all comes from that area. Um, I guess actually in Nashwalk, right? Is that where your grandma lives? Yep. And a lot of a couple other family members as well. So, yep. All right. So it was February 2021 um, where we started putting door knockers in northern Minnesota because Julie Sandstead, amongst many Democrats, did a 180. They were voting to end Governor Wall's mercy powers during an election year. January, they show up and they do a 180 and actually protect Governor Walls' powers. So what we did is we created a tremendous amount of pain and pressure on these Democrat, rural Democrat legislators. And so I'm down in uh, Orlando for the Young Americans for Liberty, what they call RevCon. Is it Rev? Rev is that what do they call it? 
Revolution, Revolution something like yeah, that. Something it like that. changes all the time. Some big convention, okay? And we have a booth there. We were trying to meet young Liberty people and stuff like that and trying to hire some people. And young Jesse comes up to our booth. I had never met Jesse. He goes, you door knocked my grandma. I was like, what? <laughs> what are the odds that this guy comes up to our booth? You door knocked my grandma. I'm like, where does she live? It's like Nashville. So I look at my system. I give his grandma a call. And uh, she doesn't pick up, of course. I'm like, oh, well, too bad. It shows that we did door knock her. And Jesse's like, oh, let me call her. Picks up on the second ring, by the way. So apparently uh, she's got her priorities. Apparently she likes you. Yep. So anyhow, um, that's how we met Jesse. And we're like, hey, do you want to come up here and be a field operative? And he's like, hell yeah. So he's our America first guy, by the way. You know, he thinks uh, thinks Donald Trump is the greatest thing since sliced bread, right? <laughs> you know, it was just that uh, – it was exactly what we needed. It was exactly what we needed, and I think we need it one more time. So uh, any other parts of the story here? A lot of people have seen this photo. A lot of people have shared it around. They think mm -hmm. it's great. Um, Walls eventually pushes off, and I'm guessing he does the rest of the parade. His people are kind of checking out your float. Mm -hmm. um, what else happened that day? You know, I, I heard that he got booed, and I know that my family was booing him. So, Oh, uh, is there I heard he got some booze in Nashua as well, so – the Iron Range wasn't too happy, and as I'm handing out the flyers of uh, how Tim Walls is a tyrant on the lockdowns and the mandates, everybody's complimenting the shirt. There's not very many people out there that look like they're there for Walls. It's all of the people in the parade, but none of the people watching the parade. Yeah, I'm not I'm not making this up. Like we door knocked almost every voter in that district, and they are very uh, uh, very much on board with us and our issue, which was at that point the lockdowns, and then how Julie Sanza was protecting governors, Governor Walz's powers. And uh, I'll put it this way. I don't think Julie Sanza is getting reelected. That's my prediction right here. She's not going to get reelected at all. It's going to be a tough year for her. I'm actually mm -hmm. kind of shocked she's running again because I think of the seven Democrats that we had targeted um, to pressure them to change their vote, um, three of them aren't running again. So, yeah, almost almost 50% of them said, mm. eh, this isn't going to go well for me. I don't know why Julie Sanstead hasn't gotten the clue yet. <laughs> so, I don't know either. <laughs> all right, I want to talk about a couple other things here, um, and we're going to be a little short on time because uh, we we're trying to get this thing live at noon, and, oh, man, lots of problems to get the live feed. But hopefully we've got it all figured out. Um, so, Jesse, I don't know if you know this because you've been up in the North Woods for a week. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but your good friend, your good friend uh, Keith Allison, our attorney general, uh, came down with a second breakthrough case. He's oh, got really? COVID again. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, he did. He, he's vaccinated and got all of his boosters. Well, and, he does. Yeah, of course. And, yeah. But of course, that's thank God. Uh, yeah. Thank, thank God. God. Right. <laughs> um, if you need to take a couple days, a week off, you know, to overcome that tragedy in your mm -hmm. life, I know. <laughs> I know how much you and Keith get along. So, yep. Um, yep. He's my best buddy, my other hero. If you go to actionforliberty.com, we wrote the story. I mean, it's absolutely insane. And, of course, just like anything, these guys, their narrative, which has changed completely in the last couple of years, is, um, well, yeah, within a year, the narrative was get get the vaccination, right? Get get the vaccine. This whole thing will be over, right? Th did I get that wrong? That's what they were telling us. Yep. And then at some point when that turned out not to be correct, they still were using this terminology breakthrough case. Because they were rare. They were very rare. <laughs> um, and then, of course, in Minnesota, Governor Walls, Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan, Julie Blaha, our state auditor, um, Mr. White, Ms. White Club, Julie Blaha, that's what she called <laughs> yep. her, uh, Steve Simon, Secretary of State, and then Keith Ellison and Melissa Hortman, the speaker. All these major Democrat politicians all had a breakthrough case. Either that or they're lying about getting the jab. But let's mm. be honest. Everyone knows at this point the jab doesn't stop you from getting it. So the narrative change to um, it helps with the symptoms, which there might be some science behind that one. But when you're a young, healthy person, you're going to do just fine, especially with this Omicron variant. So here's uh, Keith Allison. I tested positive for COVID this morning. I'm feeling fine and grateful to be fully vaccinated and boosted. I feel so grateful. This is wonderful. By they the way, must be getting some pay for that. Every single Democratic politician finishes their tweet, thank God I'm vaccinated and boosted. It is so true. These are the guys that are literally in charge of taking our tax money and buying up a stock of vaccines just to distribute it amongst the people. It's like that's a huge conflict of interest. But you're right. They're great salesmen. They're great 
big pharma salesman. You know, mm-hmm. I was reading this article. No, I, I was reading a headline and maybe the first paragraph. So I shouldn't even be bringing this up. But maybe you saw us. Uh, Bridget, maybe you saw us too. Like Pfizer had some court issue and they were their lawyers were arguing that um, the fraud that they committed, the government knew about. Have you guys seen this? I have not. Yeah, I haven't seen that. All right, so it's not ready for prime time. <laughs> I got to look into this because you got to be careful on the Internet. There could be fake news. Or if you go to CNN.com, that's all you're going to get. Um, so he finishes, I'm grateful to be fully vaccinated and boosted. I'll be isolating and working from home over the weekend or over the holiday week, and I'm ready looking forward to next year's 4th of July events. You know what this year's July 4th events look like in Minneapolis? Did you see this yet? I know you're up in the North Woods, Jesse. It was I, I'd seen insane. pictures, but yeah, and you know, when this uh picture was going viral, I actually had no idea. I was up up way north, had no internet service, and my cousin says, Hey, you got five hundred shares on this picture. Uh but yeah, so I, I kept my nose out of the news and uh just hanging out. Well, um we got a video, Dawson. Do we have the video of what happened over the weekend? Because there's quite it looked like Almost look like a war zone with fireworks basically being flung at buildings and cars. Do we have that video ready? Are you guys okay? Holy fucking shit. That was, um, that was something. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. What the fuck? There's another one. Ba- fuck. Dude, that guy's right there. What is that? Fuck, dude. Some of this shit is stressing me out. You can't really tell what it is. I hit that car. I mean, it's insane what's going on in Minneapolis. I mean, this is a lawless city. I'm not saying anything that people don't know. I think Chicago also had like, what was it? Was it 37 shootings or 37 murders? Wow. Couldn't be murders. Could it be murders? It's even insane that I don't know and believe it could be murders, right? So um, this is happening, I mean, from our studio, probably five, ten minutes away, like not that far away over the weekend. So um, condemning this spree of crime and violence was – all the major politicians like Tim Walls and Keith Ellison and Jacob Fry, who are obviously sensitive to possibly losing a future election. Uh, Jacob Fry just won a recent elec- election. If you're not from Minnesota, that's the mayor of Minneapolis, Jacob Fry. Um, you know what Jacob Fry didn't do? What's that? <laughs> he uh, he didn't actually go on to Twitter and say, happy Independence Day or happy Fourth of July. Now, you would think, okay, he just wasn't active on Twitter, but he was. And here's the thing. Pull up that graphic for us, uh, Dawson. He uh, <laughs> he wishes a happy um, Somali, what is it, Somali Independence Day. Let me pull up the screen here on mine. So he's actually, so if you look here on the bottom on July 1st, the Twin Cities is home to the largest Somali community in the country, and Minneapolis is better for it. Wishing a happy 62nd Somali Independence Day to everyone celebrating in our city and abroad. And then looks like there's three Somali words. I'm not even going to try. I'm going to murder that. Uh, the next tweet, July 5th. So here you got the mayor of the biggest city in Minnesota celebrating Somali Independence Day 
no mention on the 4th of July of our own independence. Like these are the nutcases that are running this country. And in the case of Minnesota, running the largest city in Minneapolis. So like, why am I even shocked at all that these guys are fumbling? In fact, mm-hmm. even further than that, like why are we shocked this economy is in the tank when like the Biden administration is more concerned about the, well, I was going to say the gender of the people, but they can't even use that term these days because gender is non-binary in case you didn't know that. Uh, Jesse, I, I, I'm aware. Well, I mean, it is binary. <laughs> no, is, I know what you mean. <laughs> it is binary when you can weigh in on abortion because then only women can decide. But anyhow, <laughs> they're more concerned about like the status, like the the identific the identity of their people and all their major positions than they are about the people that can get things done. And so, yeah, I'm not shocked at all. But this is just this growing problem of leftists here in both Minnesota and the country. So anyhow, uh, I just want to wrap up on that. We don't have much more time. Um, I think in about two weeks, we're going to start a live show. I think Jess will be part of it. Bridge will be part of it. Um, we're going to have a couple other guests regularly. We're going to probably come on I think we'll live feed on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Anyhow, just stay tuned. We'll have more information about that in the upcoming weeks. Any parting words, Jesse? You know, the 4th of July is a day that is supposed to be citizens standing up to tyrants. That's what I was doing to walls. That's why Jacob Fry won't say happy 4th of July on Twitter. It's because they're tyrants and they know we're coming after them. Fair enough. Uh, Bridget, any parting words? Jesse said I love it gotcha all right well thank you for tuning in this Facebook live uh, we should be up soon with a YouTube live and a Facebook live and eventually we'll be building audiences like on Rumble and other platforms thank you very much for tuning in